Hey everyone, today I'm going to show you how to get the Windows only game Cyberpunk 2077 running on Apple Silicon hardware. So despite the fact that this is a direct X12 graphics API game, this actually can run on the Apple Silicon Mac using the latest version of Crossover 23.5 with game porting toolkit support. So this is gonna allow us to run direct X12 titles on the Mac. And in this video today, I'm gonna to show you the entire process of how to do this from scratch. So that includes how to install crossover, how to enable the game porting toolkit D3D Metal, and how to get this game running through Steam and working on your Apple Silicon Mac. So the first thing I'm gonna do is to click on the link at the top of the description for my affiliate link for Crossover. If you click the link and make a purchase, then I'll make a small commission and you'll be helping to support this channel and the content that I create. So once you've clicked on the link in the description, we'll be taken to the store page or you can go to codeweavers.com and click on buy now. I do recommend making a purchase of Crossover Plus, which comes with 12 month support. If you want to get a discount, then make sure to use the promo code Apple Gaming Wiki New and just apply here, and then you're going to get a 20% discount. And right now, you can get a 23% discount if you use the coupon code GameWave3. This is valid until October the 17th. And anyway, once already, you can click the Buy Now button, and then you can go ahead and fill out your details. Alternatively, if you want to try this out, you can also go to the Code Weavers website, click the Try Now button, then you can fill out these details and get a fully featured 14 day free trial. So that's what we're going to do today. Here we're downloading Cross. Crossover 23.5, which is the latest at the time of recording. So once Crossover is downloaded, we're going to go to Finder, and then we're going to go to our Downloads folder. We're going to find our Crossover zip file here. So all we need to do is double click. It's going to extract. And then we have the Crossover app here. We're going to drag and drop this and put this into our Applications folder. Once that's copied over, we'll click on Applications, and then we're going to scroll until we find the Crossover app. So go ahead and double click. Here it's saying Crossover is an app downloaded from the internet. Are we sure we want to open? Press Open. So once this is open, we've got the option to install applications and games. So the first thing we're going to do is to download Steam. So click on the Steam icon here, we'll do a search for it. Then we're going to click on install Steam. It's going to download and install Steam into a brand new Windows 10 64-bit bottle. Here we're just going to say yes to installing these various fonts. A lot of progress is going to happen in the background. You don't have to click anything in particular. So now we're going to go through the Windows Steam setup. So just click next, select your language, select the default installation. Now we're going to allow this to run Steam. So this is downloading a 300 megabyte update. Just let that finish. So now we have the Steam login screen we can log in with our username and password, or we can scan the QR code with the Steam app on a smartphone. So now we're logging in, and now we're in the Windows version of Steam. And if you want to progress any further, what I'd also advise you to do is to shut down Steam so that we can change some of the graphics settings within Crossover. Basically, we need to quit out of Steam, press exit here. So back within Crossover, we're going to click on our Steam bottle that we just created, and we have a few options here. So I do recommend turning on eSync, especially for Counter-Strike 2. So I'm going to turn it on and reboot the bottle and enable eSync. And then we have two options here, which we can both run the game through. So D3D Metal, which uses Game Porting Toolkit. This translates DirectX 11 and 12 into Metal. Or we have the option here for DXVK, which translates DirectX 11 into Vulkan, and then Molten VK turns that into Metal. You should experiment with which one works best for you. I'm going to be testing out D3D Metal, as this tends to work a lot better with DirectX 11 and 12 games. So now what we're going to do is to go ahead and reopen Steam and go to Library and then do a search for Cyberpunk 2077. So if you haven't purchased this already, then make sure to add it to your Steam library. And then we're going to go ahead and download this. So we're going to select this computer here and then click install. And then go ahead and select your location and then press the install button. Here we're going to agree to the end user licensing agreement, press accept. And then we're going to let this start its download process and installation. So once the game's fully downloaded, we can go ahead and press the play button and then it's going to go and launch. So it might download some dependencies like the Steamworks common redistributables. Just wait for that to finish. And then it's going to go ahead and launch the game. So you're going to find that the game actually runs pretty well, especially on higher end Apple Silicon chips. So this is the M1 Max chip running this at 1080p at medium settings. And we're getting a pretty admirable frame rate Considering the fact that we're running through game porting toolkit crossover, it's a Rosetta 2 Intel game being translated onto the ARM chip. The code is Windows code running on macOS and DirectX 12 is being translated on the fly directly into Metal. So performance isn't as good as it would be on a similarly priced PC, but it's very admirable for a Mac. Anyway, this is how you get Cyberpunk 2077 running on Apple Silicon hardware. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please like, please subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.